I saw my friend get wasted. Maybe I should tell him that in the comments. Those who've been following along will know that we didn't go to NAMM this year, and a lot of the reasons why we didn't go were purely financial. But uh, after uh, talking to a few friends and uh, seeing some of the video, um, kind of glad that we didn't make it to NAMM this year uh, because the uh, $2,000 price tag that we would have paid to get down there, uh, to me, uh, would not have been worth the money. And here are some of the reasons why. One of the reasons is because uh, there wasn't really much new there. Uh, as far as things go, uh, you have the uh, Polyan Tracker Mini, and then you have the Osmos, which was released ahead of time. And then you have uh, Skydust 3D, which was released the uh, day beforehand. And that's a VST plugin. There is also the Third Wave and the uh, Soma Laboratories Terra. Other than that, there wasn't really much new at NAM this year. Here's the main reason why I'm glad I didn't go to NAM. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And for the 50th anniversary of hip hop, I feel that they should have pulled out all the stops and they didn't. Um, it was pretty clear from the video that I saw that there wasn't really much uh, emphasis or focus towards hip hop other than the DJ booth. There were just a couple of legacy hip hop artists and that's about it. To that effect, Roland, it being their 50th anniversary, and Akai and Native Instruments, they were all absent from the conference this time around as well. Now, Normally that wouldn't be as big of a deal, but you're talking the 50th anniversary of hip hop. These three companies are responsible for the primary tools that are being used in today's hip hop. So them not showing up on the 50th anniversary is kind of a slap in the face. But here's another reason why I'm glad uh, didn't show up, uh, you know, other than the financial aspect and, you know, being out the money and uh, the uh, 50th anniversary of hip hop being uh, seemingly a disappointing show out when it comes to uh, Nam's representation. We're not a big boy channel yet. And because of that, some of the opportunities regarding the relationships uh, with some of these companies just aren't going to be there so you know that said really it would just be for the purpose of hanging out but with everything going on there's a good chance that uh, we would be limited in our activities in that regard and we're not going to shovel out two grand to just have a party with other people because uh, you know as fun as it would be like there's really no point now there's some things here that I want to react to as far as what others have spoke about Nam and this getting around our community and there's uh, things that I want to touch down on so uh, let me just go through these videos Videos real quick and then uh, I'll talk about them as uh, as we watch them now this video is one of the first to go up and this is uh, Barry Johns over here uh, studio talk is the uh, channel and uh, you could see in the title it says Nam RIP so let's uh, let's get into this uh, spicy content here uh, today we're gonna talk about Nam and I don't know about you but for many 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 years I was excited about all of the new gear that we would see at NAMM. Uh, I, you know, if I couldn't go, I would always check my favorite websites that are always really good about updating all the new and exciting gear that uh, was being released at that point. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like you were flooded with all of this great new gear that got you excited about uh, something you may potentially buy in the future. Now this kind of speaks to my first point in the uh, lack of new instruments that were being showcased at the NAMM show this time around. Um, Barry is right on the money as far as the uh, original perception of NAM and the experience of it has always been to check out the new gear and see what is being released for the uh, next season and uh, what people want to get their hands on and uh, people would take video of it and uh, it would get out in the, the internet and everything like that and then uh, you know report back to the people and the people would decide and whether or not uh, they want to buy them and there'd be this uh, this buzz created around uh, the new items and that just was not here this time around. Now last year it was kind of the same to where there wasn't really much new but it was the first NAM to return uh, since COVID. So it was kind of a big deal at that point. But this time they scheduled it at the same time as Coachella and we'll touch down on that later. Um, there was so much new stuff and it was just exciting to talk to other people who were passionate 
about the uh, this art of recording, and I also play guitar, and I get passionate about that. Um, so, so many things to get excited about. So many people that you can hook up with, owe new friends, and make new ones. Uh, but most importantly, it was all about the gear, all that great and amazing gear. And and so in 2019 was, in my opinion, um, the last real true NAM. You know, then, of course, COVID hit, and that changed the world for everybody. You know, I didn't expect last year's NAM to be much, um, but this year I was hoping for a full return. I was hoping that we would get back to seeing all of that new gear and get excited about it. Speaking to the point that I just made, last year, yes, there was uh, not that much being showcased in the way of new instruments go, but it was the first return post-COVID. So mostly people were expecting a full return to NAM this time around, and it just was not the case. Now, I should preface this whole thing with the fact that Barry did not go to NAM this time around. I just wanted to point that out to say this. Even though he didn't go this time around, he's been to several NAMs before, so he knows the history of it, what to expect at a NAM show, and what is missing from the showcase. It's not like he's a novice in this industry and just took this outside perspective, not understanding what the NAM show is. He has a full and complete understanding of the NAM show and what its capabilities are as an organization. So This year when NAM uh, opened, Typically, most of my favorite websites would start po posting up all of the new gear. I didn't get to go this year. I'm glad I didn't this year. But, um, but I, you know, they would post all the new gear as they typically do. And you'd look at it and say, "Is are there servers down? Is something going on here? Well, what, what's this all about? Because there really wasn't much, if anything, to look about. And there you go. The NAM show isn't just about being there physically. It's about the people who are there physically showcasing what is there first for everybody else to see. And as far as this point of the vendors who uh, were gonna go or weren't gonna go and ended up not going, 50th anniversary of hip hop, no Akai, no Rowan, no Native Instruments. I personally didn't see anything that excited me. I'm not saying it's not there, you know, and, and there's not things to be excited about, but for me, I didn't see anything that was released like, wow, wow, I've got to have that, or I really want to investigate that and look into it. Uh, and I talked to some people who went to NAM, and, and it was basically, in their opinion, a big flop. Um, yes, all of the activities that happened around it, you know, uh, the gathering together and hanging out with some new people, making some new friends, that was all there. But as far as the gear... Um, most manufacturers were MIA, and if they were there, they really didn't come to show us anything. This is the general consensus of the NAM show this time around. Those who attended have told us the exact same thing. So just like Barry said, I'm glad that we didn't get to go this time around because it would have been a $2,000 hangout. I think the last great NAM was 2019, and I don't know if we'll ever see one return again. I think businesses have evaluated, uh, is it worth the cost and everything associated with going and spending a week away from the office, away from the factory, wherever that may be? Barry just hit it on the head here. A lot of these companies are starting to reevaluate the um, cost of uh, doing this type of thing. And NAM is one of those events when they're not consistently releasing product at that capacity, there's not really a good return of investment when it comes to that, especially when most of the business is done on the internet. If there's ever a time to where they need to showcase these, all they need to do is throw together a little video and a marketing campaign. And that's a lot more effective and impactful than the money it costs to grab everything and travel to NAM and uh, pay the people who uh, run the show and uh, do that traveling. It's just, it's not a good investment anymore. And that's pretty much what's happened 
happening to Nam, in my opinion, anyway. For those who didn't see, our friend Weaver Beats over here uh, re reacted to this video on Twitch and posted it up on his uh, Weaver Beats 2 channel with the uh, same spicy title, uh, Nam Rip. <laughs> One of the biggest differences here between Weaver Beats and uh, Barry, uh, not only the uh, age gap between the two of them, is that uh, Weaver Beats actually went to Nam this year. Um, it was his first time at Nam, though, and uh, he's from Hawaii, so uh, he's not used to the hustle and bustle of LA and everything like that. So this was all quite new to him, but this is his take on the whole thing. You know, if I couldn't go, I would always check my favorite websites. I mean, if you didn't go, though, like, how do you know that you're really seeing what went down? You know what I mean? This speaks on to my point that I was making earlier about people's uh, perception of uh, others who are commentating on the NAM show that they did not attend. A lot of people that go to NAM, they've been to NAM before. They know what to expect. They know what the routine is. And they know what these vendors showcase when they do something. And when there's less, it's something to be noticed here. But again, you know, it's the differences of the experience with NAM and the lack of experience with NAM. It was kind of like you were flat. I love Barry Johns, but hey, he was an old man yelling at clouds. I don't think that way at all about Barry's video. As a matter of fact, I think he was spot on in every aspect of it. And, uh, you know, and maybe showing my age here, but from my perspective, I think Barry's uh, dead on. And I think a lot of the discrepancies as far as other people's understanding is the fact that uh, there's not as much knowledge with them uh, as far as the uh, routine of NAM because they're not used to the routine of NAM. So no slight whatsoever, I'm just saying. I will say that there wasn't a lot of new stuff though. Like there were a few things, but not much. Uh... Anime cons or anything to go off of, I assume people at NAM don't use deodorant. It wasn't that bad. I think anime cons are just better. I mean, what am I saying better? Worse. I don't know why I said better. You ever been in a packed crowd full of juggalos? Businesses have evaluated, uh, is it worth the cost and everything associated with going and spending a week away from the office, away from- Well, it's not even just that. Like I said, it's more so the, the ability to market online. I think you can market better, like just dropping it when it's ready versus waiting until this convention, you know? And you can prep the video a lot more. You can like make sure it comes out right. And then just, you can, you know, do your same presentation at NAM. I do agree with him for the most part. Like while you, some of you guys in the chat said it was old man yelling at clouds. I mean, sometimes the old man yelling at the clouds is right. You know what I mean? I think he is kind of right. But I haven't been to the other NAMs, so I can't say for certain. But I didn't see a whole lot of new stuff. I did see a lot of stuff I was interested in that I didn't know about. But I don't think too much of it was new. And there you have it. Like I said, general consensus. Weaver actually attended the show, and he happens to agree with Barry on a lot of these points. Things are changing, so. But most importantly, subscribe. <laughs> Trying to hit our thousand here, just saying. Yeah, overall, I, I, I agree with what he's saying. I do think that maybe his view is a bit biased just because he's mostly in audio engineering stuff. Like, I don't think he really is into like production gear or like, you know, production plugins or whatnot as much. I think at least from what I know from uh, from watching his channel a bit. Also, I think I think your, your view is gonna be a bit biased as someone who didn't go. Like it's gonna, you're gonna feel like it was a better idea to not go after you didn't go you know whereas like someone who had gone oh yeah what about the casio mustard that's true overall don't really disagree with him and there's a discrepancy that i was talking about earlier the difference in age and experience barry has attended several of the nam shows in the past and he's been heavily invested in this uh versus weaver beats this was his first time going i didn't go and i'm glad that i didn't go because uh going there for a two thousand dollar party just wasn't in the cards for viral beats so this video is from some 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 htk he was actually in tandem with uh Weaver, they uh, bunk together and everything like that. So uh, this is his take on the Nam show. What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's day three at Nam. Um, I didn't really do all this reporting like I did last year, all this other stuff. Because I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, I'm kind of disappointed with Nam this year. But it's not fair though, because when you think about it too, is I do get to see things early and I do cover all this stuff. But I don't feel like this year they gave us a bunch of new stuff. But the experience has been awesome. Got to see a whole bunch of awesome people. This is his perspective from the very beginning and mentioning uh, the disappointment and the uh, lack of new items there. Even though this was only his second time attending Nam, he was actually at the show and it wasn't the same as it was last time around. This is my buddy Chump Flexington, oh, yeah. AKA Champ Flexington, AKA Guitar God. I want to send a special shout out to you for maneuvering me and Weaver around all weekend long. Without him, guys, none of this NAM coverage would be possible. Walking the floor at NAM is always one of the dopest experiences because you get to see all kinds of different people, all kinds of different musicians having fun playing music, and this is the start of the journey. On a side note though, this Osmos was fire. 
and the expression on the Osmos is out of this world. You should definitely check it out if you get the opportunity. We got Dr. Mitz. Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> Overall, NAM was a great experience as always. Um, this year, I didn't cover the same because I live streamed for hours every single day. And speaking to Weaver's point or anybody else's out there who is wondering how people who uh, haven't attended NAM can really speak on it, this is exactly how. Uh, our friends have live streamed it from the floor. Now, this next video is Sanjay C's uh, day one video. And uh, the reason why I'm putting this up here is because there was an overall theme there that uh, a lot of people didn't catch but Sanjay C here did, and I want to show you guys and react to it, so. We're at the NAM <laughs> Show 2023, and we're here to show you everything cool that we can possibly find. We're at this sign, we haven't even gotten in, we haven't even got our badges yet, no, so we're we about haven't. to do that. Come along with us, we're super excited. As always, it's incredible. So much new gear, amazing things to try out for the first time, and lots of fun in between. Spatial audio, immersive mixing, everyone is talking about it, and every company wants to get in on it. From floor shaking, full spatial speaker setups, to spatial headphones, to a 3D spatial synth plugin, it's all here. We started the NAM experience with a visit to Apogee, where they set up several rooms for us to experience spatial audio. Now, even with it being the 50th anniversary of hip hop, this was the theme to Nam pretty much. Spatial audio. This is the transition that we're making in this industry. And like Sanjay C said, every company wants to get in on it. And because of that, the primary theme of Nam this time around while last year it was all about the DJs, this year is all about spatial audio. Hip hop anniversary be damned. And I think that was a bold move, but they should have at least had the hip hop be up there with the spatial audio. And that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I didn't attend this year. There were setups from Sonos, Genelec, IK Multimedia, and even Lucid, who had the first Dolby Atmos certified car. This industry isn't just gravitating towards Dolby Atmos. It is becoming the standard. We're in the process of transition. That's why this was so prevalent at NAM. And good on them. It should be. However, 50th anniversary hip hop guys. I sat down with Jonathan Morrison, who is making the best spatial music mixes I've ever heard, to talk about his experience with spatial mixing and how you can get into it too. Don't miss that interview, it's coming really soon. I was actually invited to an immersive spatial experience with Sony. They took us into a special booth and inserted tiny wire microphones into my ears and played a spatial mix with regular speakers first and told me to remember the sound I was hearing. Then they placed the new Sony MDR MV1 spatial headphones on and did some more measurements. What happened next was truly incredible. They played the exact same mix and I honestly thought I was still hearing it from the speakers. I had to take the headphones off to believe it was actually coming from the headphones. They sounded exactly like the speakers, with all sounds exactly where they should be in the space. So could these provide a better spatial experience than Apple AirPods? I think so, but we'll have to test them at home. I hope I can get them soon to put them to the test in my studio. And there you have it. This is the biggest transition happening in our industry since MP3, so it is kind of a big deal. Now our next video we're reacting to is uh, our friend Av McCree over here who did not attend NAM, uh, but he had his take on it. So uh, let's react to it. Hey, just in case you was living under a rock this weekend, well, NAM happened. No, I don't know what the acronym means. If you can leave a comment in the comment section, that would definitely help me out because I don't know what that acronym means. Other than that. That's kind of weird. Why don't you just look it up before you do the video? I don't get it. Let's go. And that, it was in an awkward time this year. It usually happens in January. Last year when I did attend, because I did not attend this year, no hate in my blood or anything like that. I just had some obligations to fulfill. Yeah, it happened in spring. Maybe they wanted us to spring into our wallets and spend some money. Yeah, that was corny. We're gonna talk about the five best things at NAMM this year. And 
Yeah, let's get it. Don't worry, my enthusiasm will pick up. Coming in at number five, we have Skydust 3D. VST plugin. Yeah. It's not a very interesting list this year when it comes to stuff at NAMM. If I had to put a VST plugin on there, I hate to say it. But Skydust 3D actually shows some pretty promising things in the future of sound. I mean, they did innovate yeah, the way, know. you know, VST <laughs> plugins sound as far as spatial audio, if you're into that, or spatial audio. I, I don't even know what to call it. But if you're interested in that type of thing, that was oh, all man. over the place. I actually saw a demonstration led by the homie Sanji C, and I thought it was a pretty good thing that he showed that off. Of course, that was coupled with another video when it comes to the Sony MDR spatial, spatial, spatial audio <laughs> headphones. And I think it's worth your time to get a little bit more information on that. Now, Av is on point here when he's talking about a VST being on the list, but this is quite the VST. We demoed it when it came out, um, and then we actually have uh, three videos on it, uh, two uh, from the lives, and one is condensed and a little bit easier to uh, digest video. Um, but we went all through the uh, Skydust 3D, and we're not done with it yet, but uh, there's something to be said about uh, how good the VST is in that regard, but also the lack of hardware that was at NAMM this year. So he's right on. And I actually thought he was going to mention me about that because I put my video out two days before he put this video out. So Coming in at number one, we have the Polyin Tracker Mini. Bruh, I ain't gonna even hold you on this. The Polyin Tracker Mini was the main thing that I was interested in, if not the only thing I was interested in when it came down to the way NAMM went this year. And if it wasn't for the announcement of their new sample-based brew box, I, I probably wouldn't have gave a damn about NAMM at all. This is definitely the piece that stole the show at NAMM. Um, it was previously unreleased um, prior to Ben Jordan going on the road with it. And he was the one who uh, brought it out for the first time to uh, show everybody. So it was the uh, the freshest and uh, newest uh, thing out there. And uh, yeah, it's on on most people's uh, top list of the the top item at uh, at Nam this year. So overall, I wasn't impressed with the whole entire Nam show this year. Uh, the one last year was okay, and the best one, in my opinion, was the 2020 NAM, and I wasn't even at that NAM. There was so many damn good announcements there. I mean, the introduction of Sonicware to the industry, uh, the MPC-1, uh, the Polyin coming up in there. It's just so much things happened before, you know, yeah. And that's kind of speaking to the point that I made earlier, and this is how we know that other NAMs have been better because the announcements around NAM, the stuff surrounding the actual event, there were uh, release after release, and uh, it was just one of those things, especially that year. There was a lot of gear that came out that year, so uh, it was pretty good. Uh, but there's a stark contrast between the two with uh, there not being uh, very much in comparison especially and as you could hear from that uh av didn't attend that nam either but he knew that it was a good one based on what was coming out so you don't have to attend nam to understand what is at the nam show uh whether or not you've attended at the show uh beforehand doesn't make a difference i have never gone to NAM before. Last year was the very first time that I've gone to NAM, but I've always paid attention to what's at NAM. I've had friends that have gone and I've seen videos online. I've always had a general understanding of how the show went and uh, what is out there to uh, showcase. So uh, for the people on the internet here who are uh, taking criticisms over uh, not being in attendance at NAM uh, from the people who think they shouldn't be speaking on it because they weren't there. You guys got to realize that uh, a lot of us have been following this stuff for uh, many years and have been heavily invested in this industry. So uh, yeah, we know our way around as far as uh, the knowledge of a uh, specific event that uh, used to be something that everybody showcased. One thing that I want to point out here, kind of speaking to that point, is the fact that uh, there was a lack of content 
revolving around NAM this time around as well. It wasn't just the lack of gear and new gear that was there. There was a lack of content all the way across the board. So it was just one of those things that make it made it look lesser of a show uh, this time around. But my whole thing still comes back to that 50th anniversary of hip hop just being a minor a blip. The last video we're gonna react to here is Bolo the producer who actually did attend NAM uh, this time around. And uh, you could see in the title, it's pretty spicy here, social media, YouTube destroying NAM. To add to the spice, there's a thumbnail that has a picture of a tombstone that says Rip Nam on it. Let's check it out. As much as I like reviewing products on my channel for you guys, I think it is more beneficial for you guys to actually go to a Nam show and physically touch the products. And that way you guys can make a decision if you want to go ahead and get it. Because I think that's what Nam is about. I think it's about you physically going there and physically touching the products. That's what makes Nam special. And I think with a lot of this social media stuff and all of us YouTubers doing this, I think that there's a gap between companies not understanding what is important to the consumer. Now, I'm not going to disagree here, but I would say this. Communicating with other creators and uh, other musicians and other business professionals, it is that community that is really the heart of NAM, and the touching the gear is just a happy accident. Seeing and touching the physical product, and I think that's what went wrong with NAM this year. Oh, and I no. forgot, uh, Coachella was on the same weekend as NAM. I think it's interesting that with everybody who did content on NAM this year, hardly anybody mentioned Coachella. I think Bolo is the only content creator here who mentioned the fact that it was happening at the same time. Coachella and NAM began on the exact same day, and they're in close proximity of one another in California. So, yeah, Coachella's huge much bigger than NAM. Those two worlds intersect with one another. I'm sure there are a lot of people that had to work Coachella that weren't able to go to NAM that would rather had been at NAM. They couldn't make it out because they were busy working and vice versa. It's just never a good idea to have uh, two intersecting events like that, especially when they're in the same industry and especially when they're in close proximity like that. It's never a good move business-wise to do. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is NAM. And NAM was good, it was cool, but it was not like the NAMs that were before. NAM this year was a little weird in a bit because a lot of the top brands were not there. And I even got a little inside from uh, one brand, not a Kai, it was not a Kai. And they said that, you know, with NAM costing so much, thousands of dollars to set up a booth and getting people to, you know, get there and represent the booth and all like that, they said it was actually cheaper to just go ahead and have people like me and other YouTubers and influencers to just review the products for you guys. And in that way, you guys can make a decision if you wanna buy it rather than spending all of that money just for a NAM booth. And there it is. The exact thing that we were talking about earlier on the return of investment and what is more cost effective to do as a company. This is hearing it directly from one of the companies. But either way, it was still a good experience because I got to meet so many people there and I got to meet so many different influencers and I got to meet some amazing musicians out there as well that, you know, watch my videos. And, you know, thank you guys for who watch my videos. It's actually kind of cool. But I can say this, I can see the social media effects starting to take a hold in them because it was nowhere near the size that it was the last time I went. That's a good question. When was the last time I went to NAM? Had to be 2019 or 2020. It was right before COVID. I think it was 2020. But it was one of those times where everybody was there. And then we were there with Warren G and we got to walk around and, and kick it with Warren. We were doing studio sessions in LA each night and there was just a ton of people there and it was just packed. Everybody was there. All of the companies were there. Everything was great about that NAM that year. However, this year is a stark contrast from that. There was maybe half the attendance there, I would say this year, if that. And so far as the companies showed up, I could probably see about a 30 to 40% decline. 
I could be wrong in those numbers, but yeah, it was it was a uh, it was a pretty big decline. See, in Bolo here, he has experience being at Nams and being at the bigger Nams that were uh, more prevalent hip hop representation than this time around, being the 50th anniversary. Um, yeah. The general consensus is what it is. And I don't know, maybe the reason why so many people didn't show up is because they had Coachella the same weekend, which I yeah. clearly don't understand why you would have Nam and Coachella on it's the crazy. same weekend, but that's not for me to know or for me to find out, but uh, it still is kind of weird to have Nam and Coachella on the same weekend. I don't understand that one right there. But it still went on, still had a great time, still got to see some great products, but I was waiting for that one big announcement. But the only big announcement I got came through my email because the companies that were not there sent the big announcements to my email instead of debuting it at NAM. And for y'all thinking that an MPC XL is coming out, nah, there's no MPC XL coming out. No MPC XL coming out, huh? Man, the community was pretty sure of that one. So is he just trying to uh, deflect and uh, distract to make it a surprise in the end? Or has uh, he got legit information here? I think he's got legit information here. You know, uh, us here and our guesses, you know, we saw some coding and everything like that and a, a few pictures and all that. But uh, yeah, so spicy take aside, uh, yeah, that that is the thing, you know, waiting for that one thing, and uh, it just it wasn't there because the the companies who are all going to release something new, why would they show up to Nam if uh, the announcement hasn't even been made in that regard? And you could just affect the same purpose by sending an email. So, but there's some other big announcements that are coming out really soon, but they did not debut it at now because they feel like it's actually better to just do it here on the tube or on Instagram or on TikTok or all the other social media platforms because it's cheaper, which they saving money like that. Maybe we need to uh, band together and kind of get this ship a little tighter. It's simply just not cost effective to go to Nam as a vendor, as a company. It's a lot easier and a lot more cost effective to do it via the social media route. So yeah. I get what he's saying here, and uh, yeah, you're damn right. That's how these companies are operating because uh, wouldn't you as a company? You know, why would you go to California, pack up all your stuff when you could uh, essentially achieve a uh, better result by uh, webbing it out through the uh, through the internet and uh, have your content creators be the uh, the voice and the sales personnel for you. You don't have to hire people to pack everything up and uh, go to a uh, convention and uh, and hang out for a few days. So it's kind of like what I was saying earlier. It's just the return of investment thing. It's not cost effective for these companies to do that, regardless on the profit they've been pulling in lately and all the other stuff, it's still a cost saving measure in the end. A lot of the new items that are coming out are not being introduced at NAM. they're being introduced online through people like me and some of your other favorite influencers, which is kind of crazy because they're saving a grip of money and they, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that right now. But even though some of these companies are pimping us out, Smart I mean, man. using us, they are using social media more and more to debut their products. Other than that, there were a bunch of smaller companies there that had some great things. A lot of stuff was pretty much kind of like the same things mm -hmm. in a sense. But there were a lot of great small companies that were there. A lot of companies from overseas uh, that were there uh, displaying their products and it was cool. Now, everything wasn't bad. I got to meet some cool people. I got to see Stevie Wonder and I got to meet some legends to me. I got to meet to see KLC, who is Beats by the Pound, who made all of the No Limit stuff. I got to meet brother EA Ski. He is a hip hop legend in the game. He made so many hits when I was younger in the 90s that I really looked up to. So I got to get around those guys, talk to them, soak up some energy and soak up some information. I got to meet a ton of our brethrens here on YouTube. That was dope. And man, we had a great time either way. Even though Nam was a little eh, I think that it's still very much worth going. 
They're just gonna have to find a way to get these big companies back. And on these bigger companies who did not show up this year for them, I invite you guys to come back as well. We need y'all there. Regardless of what we're doing on social media, YouTube, IG, whatever that we may use, we still need you guys there because as much as we want to do all of this stuff online, it is so good to see those booths there because it just makes the whole experience better. Even though we might have all the products, we might've reviewed all the products, a lot of people really want to touch and feel those products. And that's what's at the heart of NAM here. The interactions, meeting people, networking, interacting, you know, just taking pictures, having conversations, having that community. But in the end, this is the National Association of Music Merchants, not the Association of Creators and Musicians. So you got to understand the business behind it, even though NAM itself is a nonprofit. And I'm with Ben Jordan here, and they need to do better when it comes to their nonprofit, because with what they do, a lot of people think that they're for profit. And uh, one thing that I would say that they absolutely need to do better next time around is it's still going to be the 50th anniversary of hip hop, the next NAM. They need to have a showing for it. One thing these uh, companies need to understand, without hip hop, you wouldn't be in business, especially in North America. Hip hop has dominated the market in North America for several decades. And that means the music equipment that is producing the music itself. If hip hop did not exist, these companies, most of them would not even be in business right now. Hip hop has made a lot of these companies. So to have such a little showing out for the 50th anniversary, it's crazy. It should have been prevalent to everybody. There should have been stuff all over the uh, social media. There should have been videos everywhere to where everybody could see what representation hip hop had at NAM, and that just did not exist this time around. That would be my biggest disappointment going to the NAM show. Yes, we have the spatial audio transition that's happening, and it's revolutionary. I'm not taking away from any of that. However, 50th anniversary of hip hop, the tools that are most prevalent within the genre, and the companies that made those tools aren't in attendance. I don't care if it's more beneficial or cost effective. This year, out of all years, is the time to show up. Because you not showing up is a bold statement to the community. And don't think that we don't notice. We all see and we all hear. So regardless on whether you have equipment or uh, any kind of gear that is coming out or any reason for being there, the 50th anniversary of hip hop should be reason enough. And Nam, you should have done better this time around.